This video is about using Audacity to record Jam Studio. We used to use this online, but since Flash has been discontinued, we'd have to use a local version, and it's a bit buggy. Despite not having the full range of accompaniment options, I still think this is probably the easiest and quickest and cheapest method. Before you open Audacity, ensure you've got your headphones plugged in. Then go to the Start menu and type AUD and it should come up. In order to use it to record online sound, which could be YouTube sound effects, a video, or in this case Jam Studio, you need to set up the audio in a particular way. The host has to be Wasapi, the playback device has to be headphones, and the audio recording device has to be headphones loop back. So once that's sorted out, we can go ahead and open Jam Studio. As you know, we're opening the Flash Player, and if you've already used it for Jam Studio, it will remember, which I have, but otherwise you can paste this address in from the OneNote page, and it will just open. Now, I actually do have a login, but I'm going to make this video using the free version. It does reduce the total number of accompaniment styles you're able to access, but other than that, it's all good. As well, I'm going to try to demonstrate how to make a harmonic rhythm type that's different to one chord per bar. So I'm going to just do a simple chord progression in the key of C major. I want to turn loop page off and then I want to choose my accompaniment pattern. Today I'm going to choose some piano parts only. So let's just listen to this the way it sounds now. also need to make sure that your local playback is on headphones as well. So you press record and you pop in here and press play. Let it finish until it goes to a plain line and then press stop. This button here will just make it fit the screen. And I've just got a nice little four bar loop. You can slice off the silence, that's where the completely flat bits are. You can do more fine editing in Mixcraft. It's possible to save the project, but you don't really need to. You can just export to audio straight away to on your computer. And I'm just gonna call this one and save it in downloads. But if you were a student, you'd put it in your OneDrive folder and it'll remember where you're putting things. Back over in Mixcraft, we just import that sound that we just made. two things. This is at 100. This has to be at 100. So whatever your project tempo here is, it has to match here, otherwise it'll be the wrong length. And even with that, you'll see it's very slightly too long. And if I look here, that some of the sounds are starting a little bit too early. So I probably cut off too much at the start. But that's the other alternative would be turn snap off and just nudge this slightly sideways by sort of zooming in. Just sort of nudge it slightly sideways so you've got more accuracy. If you're really obsessed with accuracy, another method is to just very slightly increase the size to 101. That's probably the best thing. And then just snip off the last bit of silence. Keep snap on snip off the last bit of silence. And that sounds pretty good. You can see this, the things are starting really neatly. So once you've got it perfect, I sometimes also like to check it with the metronome on. Now comes the tricky bit. Imagine that your song has two chords per bar instead of one chord per bar. What I want to do in that case, there's two methods. This is the quickest one. Zoom down until you can see the beats and just slice out by selecting and pressing delete the third and fourth beats of each bar, and then just move the loops across so that they all fit in two bars, and then you can merge them, right click merge. And that should give you a loop which sounds okay, matches the beats. Now that particular piano pattern didn't work particularly well for that process. Some of them will be better than others. You can see there's quite a lot of choices with the free version, but some of the later options you can't use if you don't have the all access pass, which is a shame because some of those later ones are really nice. 
So with the All Access Pass, this thing up on the top left is green, and I can choose some of the later piano, some of which are really pretty. Some of them are a little bit right-handish. They don't have a proper bass line. This one has bass lines. You could always add a bass line as a Sibelius file or type them in MIDI.